had migrated to Lusaka from Mumpika, in the northern part of Zambia, and settled in Matero as they sought greener pastures. In Matero, at house number 1148 in Chito Road, is where there are their nine children, and one of them, them named Maus Waria Emmanuel Sampa. Emmanuel, because he was born a day after, after Christmas, 26th December. I uh, also wish to thank my dear siblings, last, but by far not the least, I thank my beloved wife in Chimonia and all our dear children for their relentless support in my passion to serve people. I thank all the fans of Ovova TV. Madam Speaker, allow me to congratulate you for not only becoming, becoming the latest speaker of the Zambian Parliament, but the first woman in Zambia to lead this important arm of government that makes laws. I also congratulate the first and second deputy speakers, as to all the 156 elected MPs and the nominated eight, I send my sincere congratulations to all of you. Madam Speaker, I wish to commend all Zambians in all the 156 constituencies for having turned up en masse to vote in the last elections, unprecedented in our time. People lined up as early as 3 a.m. just to cast their vote. Well done to you, all Zambians, and may this same spirit continue on that same day in August 2026. May we politicians know that if we don't please you, or we don't deliver what we promise, that they will always come when you, the people of Zambia, have the last say through the ballot. Madam Speaker, the voting day was, however, a very sad one for my party, PF, and more so, me in particular, due to the unprecedented levels of violence. We have seen political violence in Zambia before, but never have we seen it get to the level of killing opponents. Jackson Kunga, the leader of PF in Northern Western Province, was in Lusaka some four months ago before elections. My wife and I had dinner with him at a restaurant as he was one of my advocates in the PF Central Committee that I get adopted for Matero. A month earlier, he had also stopped by my office on his way for his mother's funeral in Mazabuka. Kunga and I were comrades and allies in politics. Me there on the voting day, I heard he had been butchered in cold blood, and that devastated me. Little did I realize, however, that in the next hour or so, I'd also meet a near similar fate. Madam Speaker, I'm not bringing it out for sympathy, as I've been through a lot in my life. Uh, but, and also this matter is in court, but suffice to say that at 3 p.m. on that day, as I went to check that my polling agents had received their lunch at George Central High School polling station, George Compound, Madam Speaker, I got, got stabbed, stabbed in my, in my back, back as, as voters, voters in, in the queues come in, in all directions. directions. Yeah. Madam, Madam Speaker, Speaker, suffice to say that, that the next time I arrived, I was inside, inside UTH ICU theater, theater with a deep cut in the back, oozing with blood, and, and being stitched. Besides me was one of my team member, Gilbert Banda, who had also been hacked deep in the back of his head and neck. Madam Speaker, I remember two days later being summoned out of hospital beds and sneaked into my terror to be declared the winner of the election after beating my closest rival by over 20,000 votes. Indeed, when God decides and anoints one for a leadership position, not even knives, spangers, axes, or guns can prevent that from happening. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I take it and pray that I be the first and last one indeed to ever enter this Zambian parliament with blood spilt, spilt or lost from a stab wound. May it never happen to any candidate here on, regardless of whether from the ruling or opposition parties. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, Madam Speaker, as I conclude, allow me to address the people of Matero. It's an honor to become the first MP in the history of Matero constituents to serve two terms. 
I pledge to save the good people of Machere without fear or favor, never to discriminate anyone, and be there for the old, young pupil, students, less abled, and the majority poor. I will carry on with my Ubuntu projects of helping the less privileged and downtrodden in our society. This I did before in the last few years, with or without money, by connecting the poor to those who can help them via my social media platforms. Madam Speaker, my terror constituents has many challenges, the youths unemployed and the pit latrines and lack of running water. Madam Speaker, one of the major achievements of the PF government was the tiring of the famous bottom road in southern province from Siavonga to Munyumbwe and to Livingston. I remember when those on the right and on the left, they used to scream all the time, bottom road, bottom road. Madam Speaker, in material constituents, we also have what we call the bottom road. It is at the bottom end of material, the Zingarume to Katani Road. That we need to ensure that it is, and with the government and with the council, ensure that it's done. Madam Speaker, my last say is that to the new government, I'll tell them of a story of a former mayor of Lusaka, the greater city of Lusaka. In his campaign, he promised free Wi-Fi. The people now, whatever you promise, they want it delivered. This government promised free education and free jobs that you have to deliver. They'll keep reminding you and reminding you. No matter how you change the goalpost, they'll keep reminding you. Madam Speaker, I thank you. Yeah. Thank you.